Hello. In this video, we're going to continue to develop our quadratic formula program. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some conditional structures to make a decision about what to do. And the reason we have to do this is for the following case. If I set a to 1, b to 4, and c to 9, what ends up happening is that graphs a quadratic with no real roots. And let's pull this up and let's look at why. So I'm just going to take a second and clear out what's here. So just let me pause this. For so I've done a little work here, and I've showed that I show zero is equal to x squared plus four x plus nine, and so we know the a, b, and c in this case. And I've actually tried to plug those values into the quadratic formula. So I've done that, and then once I've plugged those values in the quadratic formula, something kind of pops up here, which is really important to note. I'm trying to take the square root of a negative number. And that's what NAN is telling you in this program. When you try and perform a mathematical operation that is impossible, the value that is given to the double is NAN. So an NAN stands for not a number. So what we need to do is to make a decision about whether or not performing the quadratic formula is appropriate. And we need to ask yourself, what, what influences our decision? And in this case, what does is the discriminant, which is the value underneath the root. So what we need to do is the first thing we need to do here is we need to take 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9, and we need to calculate that. And we see that works out to minus 20. And that affects my decision. If I get a value of minus 20, then I know I don't have to perform the quadratic formula. I just have to say there are no real roots. So now let's do that in our program. So the first thing we're going to have to do here is introduce another variable to temporarily hold on to a calculation that we're going to check. So if we make a double and we call it BIC, and we're going to set it equal to zero right now, and what this does is stores a temporary value to check. So now, Remember, we haven't actually taken inputs in this, and that's partly just to save time. Right now I'm interested in writing more of the math of this program. But we have to make sure we calculate the discriminant after we've taken the inputs. So we're going to come down here to process inputs. And I'm going to say the discriminant is equal to b times b minus 4 times a times c. And if I wanted here, I'm doing b squared. I could very well put math.pow b to the power of 2 which is perfectly fine. So now what I'm going to do, let's actually scroll down a little bit here, I'm going to introduce what's called a conditional statement. A conditional statement in Java is a statement the computer evaluates and then makes a decision whether to, to perform whether to perform the code directly following it or to skip past it. And the, dis the, the decision structure in Java is called an if structure. So what we say is if, and then we perform some sort of check. And this is where a language point is really important. What we do is we want to check if the discriminant, and I don't say equal here, I always say equivalent. And the reason why I use the word equivalent is because if I say equals in, when I'm talking about programming, often it means I'm putting the value into that variable. If I say equivalent, it means I'm just checking if they're the same. So we can see if the discriminant is equivalent to something. We can see if it's greater than something. We can see if it's greater than or equal to something. We can see if it's less than something. Or we can see if it's less than or equal to something. So in our case, we only want to perform these calculations if the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero. So now this is the one, one of the few places in Java we don't put a semicolon at the end. What we do is we open a brace. And this brace kind of wraps. We're going to close this brace after we have everything that we want it the program to do if this is true. So I come down here and I want to, if, if the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero, I want to calculate x1, I want to calculate x2, I want to output x1, and I want to output x2. So I'm going to close it down there. And so what happens is as it comes down here, the computer is going to hit this if statement, it's going to check this condition, and if this condition is true, it's going to go through everything inside these set of braces. Now I've really stressed in class the idea about um, making your code easy to read. And one of the things we do in this case is anything that's inside this if statement, 
we tab it in once like that and what that now shows it's it's that much now it's easy for the user to follow their eye down and to follow what is inside this if statement and then we come down here so now if I run this watch what happens nothing happens and that's because what's happening is it's giving the variable a1 the variable b4 and the variable c9 we declare these other variables we calculate the discriminant and we get a value of negative 20 in this case and then we say is negative 20 greater than or equal to 0 and the answer is no so it skips down to here and continues going so now if we look at this program it's okay but one of the problems is, is right now just nothing shows up which would be a little annoying if you were a user I want the program to actually tell me that there is, in fact, no real roots. So if I go after this if statement, I can do this, system.out.print line, there are no real roots. Perfect. So now let's run this. There are no real roots. Excellent. Now you might have caught the small problem with this. And what it is, is that Let's, let's change this just to illustrate. We're going to change this to a case where we know there are two real roots. So I'm going to change this to 5 and change this to 6. So if I run this now, the computer will calculate the discriminant. And then in fact, in this case, the discriminant will be greater than or equal to 0. So it will execute inside of here and print out x1, x2. But watch what happens after it's done. It gives me x1, gives me x2, and then tells me there's no real roots. I only want to print out that statement there are no real roots if in fact the discriminant is less than zero. This is where a useful add-on structure we can, be, um, can be put into place. And it's called an else. And an else works like this. An else always has to be tacked on to, the, tacked on to an if statement. So an else always has to come after the brace of an if statement. And what it means is that if this statement is true, we'll do this. And once it's done, it's going to jump all the way down to the very end. But if it's false, it's going to jump down to this else statement here and then execute the code inside of here. So if I run this, notice now I don't get there are no real roots. But if I change this to 149, a case where we know there are no real roots, and I run this, I get there are no real roots. The last case that we want to think about is this case. So if we pop this up for a second, let's take a look. Um, I'm just going to pause and erase. So what we see here is this example would leave us with 1x squared plus 4x plus 16. Actually, sorry, this is not the case I wanted, pardon me. Um, let's go Sorry about that. We want this to be 8. Pardon me. Let's go back into here. And what we see right away is that this, in fact, is a case which is a perfect square. We get x plus 4 times x plus 4. So therefore, x is equal to minus 4. x is equal to minus 4. So we get what's called a repeated real root. So if I execute this, I get the repeated real root down here, which is OK. But what would be really nice in this program is for this program to say, to say, there is one real repeated root at that value. And so that's where I'm going to leave you to try and think about modifying this program to do. I want you to change this conditional statement, this if structure, to account for the case where there is one real repeated root. And I'll give you a hint. One of the best ways to do this is to use what's called an else if structure. Good luck.